Kunle Shorion understands the power of human potential and has dedicated his life to helping others find and maximize their potential through mentorship and intuitive strategy. PK, as he is fondly called, has spent the last 25 years influencing culture and conceptualizing the future. Through his company, Kenneth Shurion Research and Ideas LLC, he works closely with thought leaders, innovators, and influencers to solve contemporary problems with purposeful solutions. He is an accomplished speaker, organizing Ola Kunle Shurion alone under the ages of the Feedback from the Future org, and honoring a hundred speaking invitations a year to inspire, empower, and challenge audiences to imagine and actualize a future where Africa takes its rightful place as a global power. Faith is at the core of Kunle Shurion's calling, and divine impartation fuels his message and mission. Love and empathy have shaped his legacy, and he works to lead others onto the path of spirit-led exploits. Harvester's International Christian Center with a standing ovation. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Kunle Shario. you god bless you real good it's a blessing for me to be here i can't oversize the privilege overemphasize the privilege of holding the microphone i've done this for over 30 years i've spoken to thousands of people across the world different cultures different languages um i've never gotten used to it but to be in special environments it's just something that lifts. So I want to really appreciate Pastor B and Pastor Mo for all that they are, for all that they see. I told them in the first service that I'm not given to flattery. I'm not a nice person. I have to tell you, I, I say that very humbly. I used to be worried about it, but I've since taken my freedom. Particularly when I found out that nice is not a fruit of the spirit love joy peace i look for nice I say, there's no nice here i don't need to be nice because when you try to be nice you try to make people like you and when you make people like you you disempower yourself and empower their own ignorance because you will smile when you should frown you will frown when you should smile you will say yes when you should say no you will say no when you should say yes you are busy trying to be in people's good books. Never strive to be liked, strive to be respected. They may not like you, but they will respect you. That's what's most important, right? And I travel a lot. I'm privileged to work with different senior pastors, CEOs across the globe. Um, but one thing I found very rare is authentic leadership. So rare. When I find it, I honor it. I try to camp around it as much as I can. Um, I've been called up like this to churches to speak, and I'm sure you've seen it on YouTube before. I just take the microphone and say, Father in Jesus, I just start teaching. I have nothing to say about the pastor. In fact, I have something to say, but if I say it, that can be the beginning of another level of disruption that the church is not prepared for. So I gift them with my silence by just doing what I have to do. Part of the protocol of ministries that when you come to a church on Sunday morning, you must say something nice about the pastor. You must say something nice about the pastor's wife and you must say something nice about the church. Even if it's not true, you have to say it. Now, so if I start saying what I want to say now, you are going to assume that's what I'm doing. It's just saying those nice things that they have to say about pastor and pastor's wife and about church. But that's because you don't know me. If you know me, you know <laughs> I'm, I, <laughs> I'm a freeborn, 
free born. Born free, we die free. Right? I don't conform to any rules anywhere. Jesus is my focus, and I try my best to stay on that beat. Once he's smiling, I don't care who he's frowning. That's most important for me. So I'm not trying to impress or to say nice things. I don't have to say nice things. I don't flatter. The last time I flattered somebody was 1997. That I said, yeah, you look nice. No, I don't. If you don't look nice, I will let you know. You don't look nice. And if I'm convinced you cannot handle it, I will bless you with my silence. But I'm not going to tell you you look nice, your shirt is nice. You, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that at all. You know, there was a guy on my flight yesterday who was sitting next to me. You know, good guy who was saying a lot. After a time, I just told him, sir, you have to keep quiet. <laughs> you really have to keep quiet because... I'm tired, I need to sleep. I've been trying, I've been waiting for you to keep, keep quiet. You keep talking, and I suspect you are going to talk all through this flight. So you need to, I love you, I but man, I'm not going to endure this. All right. So I said all of that to say what I want to say now, so that you can believe what I really want to say. I'm not trying to impress. You do have great leaders in your church. Amazing, amazing people. Amazing people. Like PB said, we've known for over two decades, and we've been friends, and I've continued to celebrate what we share. I don't take it for granted. Authentic leaders who see and who understand, and it's a rare quality. I'm grateful that you guys are here. I'm so happy you found yourself here. There's no better place for you to be. So my only advice for you is that there's a lot in the minds of these two amazing leaders, right? And don't warm the pew. This is not the type of house where you warm the pew. Join the workforce, find something to do, find a role, ask what you can do. If there's no department that suits you, write a proposal that they should create it. This is what I can do. Send it in, but do something. Don't be an onlooker, find work to do. It's so key. This is a culture shaping ministry right city center ministry and you can't just observe you have to be part of the show god bless you sir and god bless you man for all that you represent we love you we don't take it for granted thank you for your strength and for the grace of god upon this house so jesus this moment is yours do what only you can do you don't challenge us you change us and make us better bring your word with precision clarity when we know better, we do better. Help us to be better today. And guide us and instruct us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for shifts. Shifts. Movement from point A to point B. Whatever those points are for everybody here, those watching online, and those in the room. We see everybody, and you see them clearly, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering, everybody. I have two materials here. I think you should check them out. One of them is called A Love Affair with Failure. A Love Affair with Failure. Um, Wall Street Journal best-selling book. <laughs> Wall Street Journal best-selling book. So you can imagine how many copies we've sold. USA Today best-selling book. There's no point writing a book for friends and family. Young, young people, let me advise you. There's no point. The energy of documentation is scale. There's no point writing a book for your friends and family. You can wait. You can wait, right? So Wall Street Journal, USA Today best-selling book published by Forbes Books, forwarded by a gentleman called Bishop T.D. Jakes. Great work. So find time to get a book. It's very expensive. I'm not sorry. Um, if you can't afford it, don't say, oh, I'm losing. You're not losing. God does not make a demand where he has not invested. If you can't afford it, God will not put your miracle beyond your reach. So it means it's not for you now. Don't say, PK, can I get a discount? There's no discount. This is for those who can afford it. If you can afford it, that is proof that you're supposed to get it. You are not missing anything if you cannot afford it. Don't say, ah, I, I, I'm there's no anointing you are missing. 
you are complete. If you need it, the money will be in your pocket. So you go to the stand and then you pay for it and the Lord will give it to you. In Jesus' name. I have another work here, scripts. Scripts and agendas. It's all about how to mentor evil, how to stand in the culture, to sit on the same table with evil, eyeball to eyeball, and release enough wisdom that unlock the humility and the curiosity of that evil to pursue your source. When your wisdom has matured, it will mentor evil, if you know what I mean. It's a kingdom conversation, find it. Um, it's a download, when you get it, it's a QR code in this card. You are going to open it, you scan the QR code, and then it takes you to a portal where you then gain access to this audio. Two messages that will change your life. It's a message I preach in a closed room in Lusaka, Zambia. Um, Lusaka, Zambia. It's, going to, it's a lot. There are things we say here that, you know, but it will help you, bottom line. Okay, open your Bibles to Romans in chapter 1. Before I do that, if you were not in the first service, I'm assuming you are not, get the message of the first service. If you don't get the message, it's like I said, I am going to Lagos. First service, I said, I am going. Second service, I said, to Lagos. If you don't get the first service, all you are going to hear is to Lagos. You have missed, I am going. So get the first service, listen to it so that you can appreciate the second service. Each of them is a message on its own, but they are connected in power when you take all of them. So this is part two of the first service. Part three is third service, and part four will show up as well. Okay. Romans 1. Our first scripture in the first service was Ezekiel 11. Our next one is Romans in chapter 1, verse 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known, so it's not known yet, what may be known about God is plain to them. So the future that God is designing is available now. Because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities and attributes are clearly seen. Clearly seen. Even his eternal power and divine nature. Godhead, one translation says, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are clearly seen. How? Being understood from the things that are made. Being understood by the things that are made. Why? So that they are without excuse. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the first service, I spoke a lot about control, culture shaping. I spoke about slavery, options. I spoke about victims and poverty. I spoke about how human beings are the ones controlling all your experiences. Ezekiel 1, read in the message translation, is such a powerful understanding that you must take in, right? But I want to extend that to make you understand that the people who control the world are busy doing so because the way God has designed the world, if you can't control it, you are being controlled. There is no demilitarized zone. It's either you are the stakeholder determining human experiences or other people are determining your own experiences. You have a choice. You don't dress the way you dress by choice. You think you are making choices. People are making those choices for you. People rent a space in your head to control what I call in the first service your agency. And I'm not going to preach the first service message again. So make sure that you get it. PB, I can roll down. So, I need you to understand what God is saying in Romans 1. The idea is that the enemies that you imagine are busy working with matter. Matter 
is anything that has weight and occupies space, otherwise called the material. Your shoe is matter. You, you are matter. The air conditioner, this building, your car, your air, your belt, your fragrance, all of those, once it has weight and occupies space, it is matter. Now, the manipulation of matter is what you call value exchange. You have products, you have services, because human beings have continued to manipulate matter. There was a time in the human condition where access to stone and the skill to use it is the Bill Gates of the time. It was called the Stone Age. You can make fire, you can kill animals, you can build a house with stones. Stones was everything. But when we left the Stone Age, stones were not exhausted in the world. We still have a lot of stones. We found better ways of doing things. And so we have continued to manipulate matter, whether it's sand, whether it's metal, we have continued to manipulate it. And human power has been determined by the capacity to manipulate matter. Whether you call it nuclear power, military strength, and all of that, business, business enterprise, call it whatever. Human beings have continued to manipulate matter. We get crazy about it, though. We define our meaning by matter. Some people, I said in the first service, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Money is a necessity in the human condition. I bold to tell you that if you don't have money, you cannot fulfill destiny. Get angry all you want. Mm, that's your headache. Money is a defense as wisdom is a defense. Let's do logic. Two plus two is what? Two multiplied by two is what? Automatically, two plus two and two multiplied by two are the same. Why? They are both equal to four. Logic. So if wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, <laughs> then wisdom and money are the same. Why? They are both equal to defense. Am I talking to you? You can't have wisdom and not have money. One of the proof of your wisdom is the size of your pocket. If you have a lot of wisdom and you don't have money, you are not wise. You are a fool. No matter who, who fool you that you are wise. You are not wise. One of the proof of your wisdom is that there's something in your pocket. That's why they said a poor wise man in Ecclesiastes. They started the statement by saying there's an evil under the sun. It is evil to be a poor wise man. It wasn't praise, it's that he's dumb. It wasn't a standard, it's that don't be like this. Because if that guy was me, where you fill a form to see me, you pay consultants, you see, when you want to see me, to sit down with me, I don't sit down with people. To sit down with me, you have to pay. You are not paying for a solution. You are paying for my time. When I see you and I hear your problem, I can tell you, oh, I can't solve it. There's no refund because you didn't pay for it. You paid for my time <laughs> to sit to hear you. I don't have the time to waste zero energy for distraction. If that guy was me, it was a national problem he solved. If they are paid consulting fee or clarity session fee, he will have gotten like at least $2 million first. So if, if he can now solve the problem, if he now solve the problem, they now pay another $10 million. He will be a rich wise man. A poor wise man is evil under the sun. Am I talking to you? Now, having money without understanding is abuse. Because the love of money too is the root of evil. Not money, but the love of it. How many of you know that the opposite of God is not Satan? The opposite of God is not if it's money. Jesus said it himself. He said, you cannot serve two masters. You must love one, hate the other. Appreciate one, kill the other. Despise the other. Then he defined the masters. He said, you cannot love God and money. Paul understood that. Paul did not say, 
Satan is the root of evil. That's why he should have said. Paul should have said, Satan is the root of evil. Since Satan is the one doing evil. But that's not what Paul said. Paul said, the love of money is the root. Not money. So you can understand the contention. So the material is everything. People still, listen, people sit in Range Rover and they feel complete. People sit in a Rolls Royce, they feel enough. If you take that thing away, they are empty shells. Some people cannot feel better, and some people feel intimidated because they don't have one artificial air, they are not wearing a Rolex, they are not wearing a type of shoe, not driving a type of car, they are not living in a type of neighborhood, and they feel that is all of what it is. Container and content are two different things. When you pay for Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola reminds you that is the drink you are paying for. They say Coca-Cola liquid content only. Only that the drink is yours, the bottle is not yours. So what they are saying is pay for the drink, we have the bottle. And they are most importantly making a distinction between the content and the container. The equation of power is the ability to navigate both on a parallel universe. Most people cannot navigate both. They live in the distinction of both. In other words, they want the container without the content. So look at the richest men in the world. See that they are a fusion of container and content. Most intelligent people, richest people. Elon is so intelligent, so smart, content. Then, so much money, container, right? <laughs> I've seen rich, empty minds. I met one four days ago. It was the most frustrating 30 minutes of my life. Rich, clueless, expensive Gucci belt, the shoe. This is just a village mentality dressed in modern clothing. This is somebody who should be ruling like village, in a village, ruling villagers. Somehow he made his way into the city. And he was rewarded by some happenstance and he's in control. And, and, and I told his best friend that I give you guys 20 years, you will lose all this money. Because your foolishness is systemic. There's no way it's not going to produce the outcome on its right energy at the right time. Listen, foolishness is not an insult because I don't want you to get uncomfortable. You guys are saying foolish, foolish. Look, some of your friends are foolish. Listen, you may be foolish. <laughs> As a matter of fact, let me shock you. There's no human being on the face of the earth, none, who does not manifest foolishness. Yeah. There's none. Not me. I manifest foolishness. No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm not excused from that. I manifest foolishness. We all do. The Pope does. The biggest archbishop in the world does. There's no fool on the face of the earth who doesn't manifest wisdom. There's none. When they call somebody a foolish person, it's not that he doesn't manifest wisdom. It's that most of the time, he acts foolish. Then, occasionally, he acts wise. So, because he's most of the time acting foolish, he has a reputation for foolishness. So they call him a foolish person. It's not that he doesn't act wise. He acts wise once in a while. He acts foolish most of the time. When they say somebody is a wise man, he also acts foolish. But he acts foolish occasionally, and he acts wise most of the time. So he has a reputation for wisdom. So when they now say that he is a wise man, it's because foolishness is occasional, wisdom is more default. You see what I'm saying? When they say somebody is a performer, it's not that he's not flawed. It's that more often than not, he gives good performance and rarely gives poor performance. When they say somebody is a poor performer, he gives great performance occasionally, most of the time, poor performance. So when you aggregate that, you see that foolishness is a constant. Somebody must be foolish for wisdom to continue to have value. Yeah. If there is no classification for wisdom, right? If there's no classification for foolishness, rather, wisdom will be unnecessary. 
There will be no point. Listen, if what is rewarded in your life today is, is what is rare, is foolishness. If foolishness is rare and wisdom is common, people will be paid salary for being foolish. Foolishness will be the value we want to earn. The reason why everybody wants to be wise is because wisdom is rare. It's not the word that make it important. It's the rarity of the word. The rarity of the experience of the world. Because most people are not wise, that's why wisdom is important. If most people are wise and very few people are foolish, the whole world will be working to be foolish. Because rarity is the idea of value. Am I talking to you? So part of that is that people get easily distracted by the material. Meanwhile, what people miss is that the material is the battleground for contention. In the first service, I explained how people sit down to work on the material, call it social media, call it whatever, they work on it to pretty much control your reality and give you images and pictures through word and images to control your impulses and your imagination. The strength of your imagination and your impulses are controlled by words and images. Human beings sit down on those images. Why is there red in the logo of almost every fast food company? Why is there red? They put red there to give you a subliminal impression that the food is always hot. And so somewhere in your mind, you just believe hot, fresh food. But that's what the red color is doing there. You see what I'm saying? Are you here? So understand that people design all of these things. The material is the engagement. Now, what you must know is that everything material, everything material has a metaphysical representation. Please, when I say metaphysical, don't get it's spiritual. Let's say spiritual. So that if you don't get so every material thing has a spiritual representation. Everything. That's why Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone. Bread is the material. But he said it's not enough because he has a metaphysical, sorry, a spiritual representation. So when Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone, he's telling you that this bread, every time you eat, it is not an end. It is a means to an end. We allow you to eat on the earth so that you can understand that there is another food that is not physical. There is a spiritual food you have to be eating. Every time you eat physical food and forget spiritual food, that's why you are weak, powerless, and struggling in the world. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the Father. So the word from the Father, the world, the spiritual reality, is your spiritual food. Your physical food is your material food to represent and remind you of your spiritual consumption. When you miss that, you are abusing the creation. When all you do is eat, and you are not studying your Bible, making time with God, fasting and stretching yourself in the spirit, what you are doing is logging yourself off the essence of the idea about feeding. That is why you are not supposed to make a car your goal. The car has a spiritual meaning. The shoe has a spiritual meaning. The reason why you can't get a shoe is because you want to go to nightclub. That is to remind you of a deeper thing. The house has a meaning. There is a meaning. Your wig has a meaning. Everything in the world has a meaning. A car is not a testimony. When you testify about a car, you see, it's the proof of your years in poverty. A car is a tool of efficiency to bring effectiveness, efficiency, speed, and comfort. In other words, the goal is to make you do your work better. When you buy a car and you come to church and say, I have bought a car, we know you are not testifying. Because the car represents for most people a symbol of superiority. And so you are testifying most of the time, not because efficiency and effectiveness has come into your life, but because you have received a machine that the majority sees as an emblem and tool of superiority and betterment, and so the strength of the testimony is because of how many people don't have it, not its essence.
And the reason why you struggle to get a car is because God knows that once this car comes, our girls are in trouble. Your goal is to put your hands under their blouses. So a young man came to me and said, this year, I must buy a car, I must do it. I told him straight, in Jesus' name, you won't. He said, ah, Pupike, you are cursing me. I said, I'm not cursing you. I said, why you are still poor? Your nuisance value is remarkable. <laughs> right now, what is nuisance value? The value of an entity's contribution to the underdevelopment, disorderliness, and irritation of society. <laughs> That's nuisance value. So your nuisance value, right now, in your poverty, our girls are stressed. You are still poor. By the time you have money, our girls are dead. Your poverty condition is containment, is power under control. You are better poor. The world is better with you poor than you successful. So people don't get it. Because if you now get money, the money will amplify your nuisance. You will now meet yourself at a higher level and begin to torture your environment with your unguardedness. So may you not have that money. Because that's your money, I dread it. I dread that money. So you must understand this economy that Jesus doesn't just supply people because they want money. Let me tell you something. There's not a dollar coming to you because you are a Christian. Yes, sir. There's no blessing in heaven coming to you because you are born again. They come to you because you are in purpose as a born again Christian. If you are not working purposefully, you are not different from somebody who is not born again. God is not a waster. The Bible says, he that wastes is a brother to him that destroys. So a waster and a destroyer are the same thing. God will not send you resources when it's sure you are going to abuse it and use it to stress society and stress humanity and defeat the visions of those who need to advance. You see what I'm saying? Be soldiers. The Bible says no soldier in active service entangles himself with the affairs of everyday life. So when you are a soldier, do you know any government, do you know any military where the soldiers buy their own uniform? They buy their own guns. And oh, we know some. We know some. But let me talk about the ones I know of in another country. In the United States where I live, when a military guy gets into the flight, we in first class are getting up for the guy to come and sit down. You will see people getting up and say, sorry, sit down. They will take their seat and go and sit in the economy for a military guy. When we want to board, so <laughs> I fly Delta a lot. So there's a status in Delta called Diamond Medallion. When you're on that stage, you get many benefits. So when it's time to fly, you are Diamond Medallion. Before they call you into the flight, the first people they will call is veterans and military in service. They call them first. If you fall down while training in the military and you die, it's $400,000 for your family. They call them the Blue Star families. They take care of them. If, I, if you want to win an election in America as a president, your narrative about veterans can lose that election for you or win it. That's how they honor the military. Uniform for all kinds of things, for money, for dinner, for lunch, for all kinds, underwears, everything supplied. That's a responsible government. Responsible government. I'm not saying anything more than that. But responsible government. Now stay with me. Stay with me. God is not responsible. God is deeper than responsibility. Because responsibility is still sensitive to the conduct and the behavior of the recipient. But the Bible says that God is faithful. He said even in your unfaithfulness, he remains faithful. So if responsible governments can give you your uniform, provide your shoes, provide everything, a faithful government will never leave you stranded. Never. Never. The question is, are you in his army? Because if you are in his army, your shoe is your uniform. Your perfume is your gun. Your car are your arsenal for fighting the enemy. He will give you houses, perfume, shoes, artificial air, everything because you must represent the kingdom in the culture that sees nothing but the material. They don't walk by faith in the culture. They walk by sight. And God knows. 
You see, if you wear that, if you dress anyhow, me, I'm trained. PB, Pastor Mo, we are trained to see beyond the material. Our training is that we know no man after the flesh. So even if you dress anyhow, we'll still see your spirit. But in the culture, they are nothing like that. They don't, it's your, what you are wearing. Once you wear nonsense, you are nonsense. You appear anyhow, you are anyhow. That's how they think. You see what I'm saying? They are governed by the material. You are governed inside out. They are governed outside in. You see what I'm saying? So you have to transcend all of that. Don't let anybody fool you. He said you don't have because you don't ask. He said that when you ask, you ask amiss. Why? To spend it on your pleasures. You want to have a car so that your enemy can know. Why? You think God is that petty? That God wants to bless you so that your enemy can know that you are alive? That Lord, keep my enemies alive so that when you bless me, listen. <laughs> Man, I laugh when I hear those things. Even if you don't pray, if you stand in purpose, what are we doing in Harvesters? What are the projects for this year? What moves are we making? When that is your type of thinking, the material becomes your slave. The material is designed to serve a spiritual representation. Those who are not born again who understand the purpose of the material, like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, like Mark Zuckerberg, like Jeff Bezos, all those guys, as spiritually daft as you think they are, they understand that the material is not an end, it's a means to an end. And so they are the biggest givers to humanity. Bill Gates has given to humanity more than the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has moved you to give. It's not that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to move you to give, but the Bible says giving is acceptable according to what a man has, not what he does not have. So the Holy Spirit is still busy trying to get you to have it first. And he's still busy trying to, get, to get you to understand why you should have it. And you can, you can do that for 80 years till you breathe your last. Look, humble beginning, look, humble beginning is not a guarantee. First of all, humble beginning is the experience of all. That we transcend it is a choice. You can be in humble beginning forever. Though thy beginning was small, thy end should, should, it's not must, should, God giving you receiving, God teaching you hearing, God flowing you hearing. And so you listen to the voice of the culture. Don't give. Pastors are thieves. You know what you are doing? You are listening to the true contents of an economy different from yours. And so, on the strength of the argument, they will always win. Because material is the determinant of meaning in the space and the geography they occupy. In your own world, material is not an end, it's a means to an end. And so you must understand that the material must be deployed in a direction. You won't give, you will struggle. Now let's be clear. Let's be clear. Giving is the proof of humanity. Dogs can't give. Lions don't give. And when you give, if you pay school fees, you are not giving. That's duty. When you pay rent, you are not giving. Giving is when you empower a world beyond the one you own. That's giving. Am I talking to you? So come back to the material. So the reason why the world is busy cultivating the material, engaging the material world, and, and getting it better, and doing all kinds of things there, is because the material is the game changer in the culture. I prophesy today, listen to me. There's an anointing that has come to the world. It's about seven, eight years away from us. The office of the richest man in the world is going to be disrupted. We will not have enough respect anymore for the richest man in the world because another man is evolving. He will be spirit-filled like you and I, and they will be operating with a different set of assumptions. Before them, there will be none. After them, there will be none. They don't break ranks. They work in formation. They understand the essence of the kingdom. They know the value of the material. They will make $10. The richest man in the world will make $5. But the richest man in the world is measured by his net worth. So he will make $5 and he will skip $4. So is he richer because he has four dollars? This man we are talking about will make ten dollars more than this man. The whole world saw that he made more money. He will give out eight dollars. You have only two left. 
who is richer by net worth between both of them? The guy that had five dollars. But the world will now see that this man made more money. He just gave more away. So it is his benevolence of giving away that is the credibility of this man's status. So this man will become a ceremonial title holder. And this guy will be the real King Kong. So the man with the highest income is coming to reduce the value of the richest man in the world. And the strength of it is distribution. Those are the men that God is raising, ladies and gentlemen. You are not going to have money to keep somewhere and be looking at it and be looking at your Rolls Royce. You are going to have money and deploy 600 hospitals in the community. Bam, like that. You are going to have money and you are going to come to Pastor B and Pastor Mo and say, Sir, what is the project for this year? What does it cost? And they say, oh, it's $60 million and you are going to move it. Boom, like that. And you are not going to cry because you have an economy running for you. You see what I'm saying? Come on, are you here? Now, to begin to close this, okay, three minutes, three minutes, I will finish it. Are you all here? So the material is the engagement. Now, look at what God said. The world is engaging the material and manifesting it, but abusing it. But God himself now said, all that may be known of God, all that may be known, that is, the things you know now, Plus, all you are yet to know about God. Go and read it again. He said, even, you see, when you see the word even, he has taken every other thing into the picture. He now said, every other thing, even the things that you don't think are in the picture, are in the picture, is Godhead and eternal power. They are in the picture. Picture of what? Things that can be understood by the things that are seen, that are seen. Your head is too raised to heaven. You need to raise it down. The Godhead, eternal power, everything to know about God are in the material. God has embedded them in the material. The Bible says it is the physical first before the spiritual. If you miss the physical, you can never understand the spiritual. There are five dimensions of interpretation in scripture. To understand the Bible, there's context of the conversation. There's the premise of the conversation. There is the principle in the conversation. There is the dispensation of the conversation. And there is the palliative that manages that dispensation. Most people just stop with context. But context is not enough. So for example, when you read the Bible like, if you cannot love your brother that you see, how can you love God that you do not see? Again, material, spiritual. He's saying, if you cannot deal with the material, how can you deal with the spiritual? If you cannot deal with bread, how can you deal with God? And he's saying the, the conversation there, the context of the conversation is love. But the principle in the conversation is beyond love. He's saying if you can't manage the material, how do you manage the spiritual? So the idea is that you have to move beyond context. And the context of the material is deeper than what you see. But the Bible says that everything you want to know about God, even Godhead, even his eternal power, they are understood by the things that are seen. So that is why you see the world make research and build products, services, social media, internet, all kinds of inventions, because they don't have the privilege of a God. So all they have is the material and to indulge in it. You have the same access to the material, but you are so fixated on God, you forget the material. And so God is now telling you, it is finished. I have done these spiritual things. Everything in heaven, every spiritual blessing has been given unto you. Now use this access to control this access. Vertical connection is to manifest horizontal manifestation. When you have a vertical connection, you must be dominating horizontally. You see? So that is the challenge, guys. And what you have to do now is how do you manifest in the material world? How do you control the material world? How do we manipulate the material world with our spiritual connection? 
Everything they know in the material is nothing compared to what the Holy Ghost will reveal to you about the material. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for his sons and his children. For the creation groans for the manifestations of the sons of God. The sons of God are not coming out to buy the material, to wear it and to use it. The sons of God are coming out to introduce the material to its essence, to show the material what its meaning is, and to show the world what they represent. Everything in the world is waiting for you and I to manifest and show the world the true essence of the material. Yeah. Instruction. Instruction. Never in your life allow the media and the world to instruct you about your spiritual positioning. The strength of the media is logic and propaganda. They will fool you. You have to graduate beyond that smallness. Understand it? But your conversation is in the spirit. And you have to learn how to stay there. In the next service, I'm going to show you the weight of that conversation. And I'm going to show you how that position works and how you must be able to make that connection between the physical and the material. I see billionaires in this room. I see tech giants in this room. I see fashion moguls in this room. Listen, you are not just going to make clothes for us in Nigeria. Paris is waiting for you. Brussels is waiting for you. London, New York is waiting for you. The biggest runways, we have your models on it. But they are going to come there in a different format. Rise to your feet, ladies and gentlemen. There are doctors here who will give us the cure to cancer. Diabetes will be humbled by your intelligence. You are going to come into levels of biotechnology beyond what is on ground today. You will be a player in cell study. You will be a big player in all that is going on in popular culture. Put your hands up. So Jesus...